The Burden of Race, Early Modern Maritime Enterprise and Varieties of Capitalism. This article discusses the complex issues behind the relation between national and global economic histories and the challenges of a comparative approach. On examining different national approaches, Italian and English, to the management of the early modern maritime sector, it will argue that this comparison allows a privileged view into different varieties of capitalism, highlighting fundamental differences in attitudes toward wage labor and risk management that still influence different approaches to economic activities today. The publication of the Mespigadis, Capital in the 21st Century in 2013, just five years after the emergence of the most recent global economic crisis, revived debates on the nature and essence of capitalism within contemporary society. Even though focused on the period since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, Piketty's analysis has also stimulated a return to old classic debates about the real nature and historical roots of capitalism and its multifaceted development. This is part of a larger trend encompassing the entirety of economic history, which over the last few decades has become, for all intents and purposes, synonymous with history of capitalism. The long-lived debate on different ways of periodizing the development of capitalism usually refers to national dynamic of capitalism development. Over time, different states develop and still exemplify different variants of capitalism, and this have recently returned to the fore of policy discussion especially within the lively European debate on how this evicted the creation of the Eurozone and its subsequent resilience to endogenous and exogenous shock. At the same time, the general assumption and crucially the standard narrative employed outside of academic circles in the high-brow press and public discussion is that of a progressive development from proto to major capitalism. Even given the existence of the variant just mentioned, this implies a somewhat linear chronological development of capitalism. In shorthand, from commercial to industrial to financial capitalism. Certainly useful when presenting these issues in a preliminary manner, this can also limit a proper understanding of the dynamic of economic development. This article contributes to the understanding of Italy and the origin of capitalism by confronting both the origin and varieties debate seen through the comparative analysis of Italian and English early modern maritime labor. This choice is non-traditional in two ways. It deals with the late period usually ignored because the crisis of the Italian economy was already evident and it focused on the maritime sector which was rather neglected in the classic literature on the Italian origin of capitalism. However, I contend that this alternative perspective can provide new stimuli. The article begins by sketching the roots of the historiographical debates on capitalism origin and varieties, then on the basis of ongoing research on maritime trade and employment, it will discuss some of the crucial differences between Italy and Northern Europe, namely England, regarding the status of workers. The essay's conclusion suggests that more comparative studies are needed to bring the socio-economic and the socio-legal perspective into a proper dialogue so as to shed new light on the nature and development of capitalism over the long view during economic histories, national and global. 
since its beginning as a discipline, economic history has had a close relationship with national historiographies and has become part of those myths essential for state self-representation. This is particularly evident in the case of Italy, where the triumphant narrative of medieval economic primacy was actively used as a functional tool for the creation of a unitary national identity from the very origin of the Risorgimento, the movement for the creation of an Italian unified nation-state. I have discussed this in detail elsewhere, however, what is important to highlight here is how the relationship between economic and political development is deeply embedded in the topic and I shall return later to how this has affected the development of economic history as a discipline. In a recent analytical synthesis, Lucio Pezzolo described the salient characteristic of the Italian variety of capitalism, its deep roots in kin and family and its implication for the life cycle of firm and the resilience of investment, the strength of the interaction between formal and informal network aimed at guaranteeing a wealth of both financial and social capital and a swift and efficient information system and the resulting complex interaction between political system and economic activities. Through a discussion of the three classic case studies, Florence, Genoa, and Venice, Pezzolo highlight the common element fostering the creation of commercial part patriocide across the peninsula while at the same time discussing the different outcome connected with the differences in professional specialization, ideological variant, and demographic variables. For the remainder of this article, I shall keep Bezalo's consideration as the background and focus instead on consideration that emerge from the comparative analysis of documentary evidence on two connected issues, wage labor and risk diversification. I shall concrete my analysis and reflection on 16th and 17th century Mediterranean maritime trade. In regard to Italy, this period is traditionally discussed almost exclusively in terms of crisis, whether relative or absolute. However, for economic and maritime history, this period represents a crucial turning point in the relative fortune of Northern and Southern Europe, and for this reason, the interaction between different economic systems allows for some fruitful comparison in terms of business models. This is not the place to enter into a debate on the exact onset on Italian decline, a topic with a fractioningly large bibliography. Beyond maybe arguing that the analysis of decline is the most useful avenue for the analysis of economic historical behavior, possibly even more relevant than that of growth in terms of actual relevance for contemporary observe of the European and U.S. economies. The notion that medieval Italy was the cradle of capitalism wasn't just an Italian tale within the development arc sketch above, Italy took pride of place as a center of economic and financial innovation, as argued by N. S. P. Grass, the father of business history. And here we come to a verse important conundrum, which is rarely addressed yet state, sits like an elephant in the middle of any room where various issues are discussed. The modern academic discipline of history, for all its contemporary ambition to be global, is a true daughter of the 19th century, the product of a love match between the emerging nation-state and Romanticism. As such, it is inexorably linked to the nation-state and the same applies to economic history. 
for the latter this is particularly evident in its quantitative incarnation as all price series have been constructed on the basis of national data set with while all major pre-modern similar endeavors were similarly constructed projecting the same methodology backward in time thank you